What's up fam, it's Cam coming at you from the 2-6. Welcome back to Carolina Fragrance Reviews. All of us have started our fragrance journeys in different places. Some of us started by watching YouTubers. Some of us started in high school like I did. And of course I evolved as I started watching you know, YouTubers, started learning about different niche brands that I never heard of. So what I'm doing today is going over seven different fragrances that seven different influencers or YouTubers or reviewers, however you want to categorize it, influenced me into purchases either by conversations or actually watching the review or whatever the case may be. So here are seven fragrances from seven YouTubers. Let's get into this. So before I get into the first actual fragrance, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the channel that influenced me into buying this particular fragrance. It's my good friend Timmy from Imagine Scent. I actually somehow, some way, saw his very first review when he uploaded. It was Givenchy Pie. I remember that for some odd reason. And then I would watch his reviews from time to time and then I noticed it like his channel really evolved in between some of the times that you know I was tuning out, you know, maybe watching different channels or maybe not watching any at all. But one day he was talking about a great alternative to Creed Aventus, and it just happened to be Morning Chess. Now, ironically, I know some of you have bought this fragrance because of my love for it, but Timmy just kind of lit up and I thought the bottle was unique and then as he described it, you know, having like a Tuscan leather vibe mixed with a Ventus, I was like, I've got to try that. And then when I actually tried it, I was like, wow. And it's a very unique fragrance. Yes, it does have a, you know, kind of an Aventus type DNA to it, but it is very different. It opens bright like Aventus does with bergamot and it also has actual what they call Tuscan leather in here. And then of course you're going to have another note that's used numerous times in several fragrances that was barred from Aventus maybe. It's patchouli. But as this thing dries down when you've got like the fruitiness from the bergamot mixed with that Tuscan leather, you know, it's got like a, a richness to it that you don't really get from Aventus, especially if you have performance issues with Aventus, this is a great substitute, but it has a black amber on the dry down that is just absolutely fantastic. So my favorite fragrance that I think of when I think of Timmy is Morning Chest from Valheim Perfumery. Now, of course, I know you as a viewer, you watch different channels for different reasons. Some have more entertainment value, some have more information value, some have a nice combination of both. Some people are flamboyant and the next channel is definitely flamboyant. But you can also see passion about particular fragrances. I'm talking about Buck over at Big Beard Business. When he reviewed Lucky from Pocket Rubon, the One Million line, it was just like, boom. I could just see how excited he was. And it was actually, I think, I'm pretty sure it was the first blind buy I ever did based off of just watching somebody's eyes light up. And it was not a disappointment at all. I actually just went straight to Macy's and bought it. it. You know, it just actually hit the shelf. I think he may have got a little bit early. It may have already been on the shelf. I'm not 100% certain, but it was just that enthusiasm that just, okay, I want it. And then when I sprayed it on, I was like, yeah, I definitely can deal with this fragrance. Now you guys know I have been over this fragrance numerous times, but it never gets old. I still really enjoy wearing it. It's sweet, it's fresh, it's gourmandy. So it's kind of the best of everything that I like. And I'd find that this fragrance is perfect for, you know, like three seasons. I have wore it in the higher heat and you probably could get away with that, but for me, it's just a little too much for this North Carolina humidity. And of course, I know I have shown y'all this dent a million and a half times, but with the grapefruit and the hazelnut and the plum and honey, it's just oh, so good. But there's still a freshness about this that doesn't make it too dark. Normally when you think of notes like hazelnut and honey, you're going to think like dark and rich. Um, it does have those aspects, but the grapefruit really lightens it up. It does have like a light and airiness about it as well. That's just 
really sexy and a monster for compliments. In the short two years that I have had my channel, I have made some great friendships and some friendships really shine and sometimes those friendships have even developed while we were working on projects and some of you know that Chris from Fragmental over in the United Kingdom and I have had some fun projects that we've done together. Chris and I had a day of filming. We did a video for my channel and a video for his and he was talking to me about the Chronic from Byron Parfums and he was just like, oh mate, you gotta try it. And I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to buy that for Christmas for myself as a Christmas present. So it was this time last year when I bought the Chronic from Byron's Parfum. Now this juice here has even gotten darker. I know some people were complaining that it wasn't, you know, as strong and potent, but I, I actually got great performance even when I first purchased it, but now that it has macerated for this year, it's like gotten really dark and smells even better. Now this fragrance is extremely hard not to like. It's a little bit sweet and spicy. You've got some cinnamon and pepper, and it also has some leather in here, which makes it, you know, a little bit mysterious. It's not like a really animalic leather note that's in here, but it gives it a nice body to this fragrance. And then as it dries down, it gets a little bit powdery from the sandalwood, but when it's fully dried down, it's got a beautiful musk that is just absolutely Oh, wow. So I have to say without a shadow of a doubt, Chris, thank you for the recommendation on this one. It is definitely everything that you said that it was. The next fragrance was recommended to me by a very good friend of mine who absolutely loves his aquatic fragrances. As a matter of fact, the name of his channel even has an aquatic aspect. I'm talking about Kenny, the fragrance shark. Now aquatic fragrances, I love, but when a fragrance can actually transport you to the beach. That is the perfect aquatic fragrance. You know, there's so many, you know, kind of plain aquatic fragrances. This one is anything but plain. It's very unique. As a matter of fact, Kenny helped me get this fragrance. It is Healy's Cell Marine. Now, just smelling this fragrance just actually literally takes me to the beach. I can hear the waves, the seagulls. Um, there's notes in here that just really take me to like, the boardwalk at Carolina Beach. On the opening, it just has a nice burst of lemon. It just makes it really fresh, but that lemon dissipates rather quickly. And then you've got notes like driftwood and algae in here, which make it just, oh, like I said, just, I can see the algae on the wood, on the pier. And I don't know if you guys have ever had a chance to like walk on the beach under a pier. There's a, a specific feeling that you get and that aroma in the air that is actually, you know, I mean, if you could just bottle it up, it's like meditation in a bottle. Now this fragrance also has a greenness about it, but it's not like, um, like a grassy green. It's going to be the green that you're going to get from that algae. And it also has like a soft vetiver note. You know how some of those vetiver notes can be kind of sharp. This is more of like an inviting greenness, almost like, you know, like the pineapple grass waving. That's just, that's just what I get from this fragrance. So when I think about Kenny, I think about Cell Marine. Now the next fragrance wasn't actually recommended to me. I actually was seeking this fragrance out and there was like no reviews on this fragrance or not many, not many at all. And I'm talking about Teddy Mugler's Amen. This one is pure leather and it was George Atkinson, the fragrance apprentice who actually had a review on this. Now I had never spoke to George at the time that I was seeking this fragrance out to find out any information, but I think he did a wonderful job describing it and it was his review that went ahead and prompted me to buying it because he said that it had a lot of similarities to the original Amen, but what happened with the original formulations of the Amen, it got weaker. It didn't have that beastly performance that it did when it first came out. This does. If you like the original Amen, you'll probably like this. Now this does have a slightly earthy vibe to it. You do get that leather in here, but it's not like um, super animalic. 
Now they say that they actually have like leather that was soaked that you know they put in here. I'm not sure if that's true or if that was a gimmick or whatever, but had George not said what he said, I probably would have not put this one in my collection. And George is an incredible reviewer. I love the way that he can, you know, describe a fragrance and break it down and then also bring a cinematic value that is just mind boggling. And I can say the same thing about Chris from Fragmental. And for me personally, I like those cinematic aspects as well. So when I get to do projects with those guys, it's over the top. But this is a near and dear fragrance from the Amen line. Thank you to George. Now, when I was talking about those channels that will make you laugh or there's an entertainment value, I don't think there's a funnier channel than Kubano. I had reached out to Angel a few times, you know, a good bit before I ever launched my channel and, you know, the way that he would just get excited and talk trash while he would find a fragrance that was a ball sprayer. Uh, I don't think I got a better laugh than I did from Parfum de Marley Hobden. And I actually even like sent him a photo of me with this, you know, just thanking him for the recommendation. I mean, I won't describe the fragrance the way he did. I will leave the link to that review right here. But um, even in his crazy perverted way, I was like, I really want to try that. And I was really getting into a lot of different Parfum de Marley at that time. Of course, you guys know, like when I first launched his channel, it was like almost every episode I had a PDM in hand. But I still love the brand and this is still a very unique fragrance. So this is a beautiful, sweet, spicy, and sexy fragrance that reminds me of the State Fair here in North Carolina. Um, you know, as you're going, you know, getting tickets to rides and eating. Eating is one thing that is a lot of fun and picking up a caramel apple is like a must have. So that's what I get from this fragrance. I do get like that caramel apple because it does have caramel apple, but then you've got uh, that spicy sweetness from saffron and frankincense and then a nice woodsy dry down with the arger or oud wood um, in the dry down. It's not like a super animalic, but it is a very unique blend, you know, when you're talking about frankincense and saffron and apple, caramel, and then oud. So a beautiful, unique fragrance from Parfum Tamale and a very good suggestion from Angel over at Cubano. Now the last channel probably has prompted me to check out more fragrances than any other channel just because we're constantly on the same wavelength. We like a lot of the same fragrances, the same style fragrances, and I am talking about my good friend Ash over at Gentsense. Now I probably easily could have went and grabbed five or six different fragrances off the shelf that like I watched his reviews like, yep, I definitely need to check that out. But the one fragrance that stands out was a fragrance that he introduced to me when I met up with him in Asheville, like in January of this year. It's hard to believe it's been like a year already, been a wild year, but he was talking about this gem right here. It's Miyake's Wood and Wood and how he described it to me and the purpose of a fragrance like this. He was like, you know, think about it, man. You know, there's plenty of people who aren't you know, buying tons of fragrances. They're just looking for one super versatile fragrance. This is gonna be it. There's a freshness about this. Um, you've got some fruit in here. You've got some apricot, a beautiful apricot note. And then it's also bright with grapefruit. And you know, then you're also gonna get a little bit of that rich sweetness from that apricot. And of course, you're gonna have some woods in here. You've got some cedar wood and sandalwood and then a very nice and sexy cardamom note. So this could work as like your signature scent, four seasons, date night, it's a compliment pulling fragrance, it's not complicated whatsoever, and it's not expensive. So if you need that Swiss Army Knife fragrance, you guys know that Ashen is really good at finding those gems that work for everything and the first fragrance I think of in my collection that was like most impactive from Gentsense, Itsumiyake's Wood and Wood. 
So with that said, each of those channels have their own unique style. I feel that there's plenty of room for everybody to have their own unique uh, personality or comedic aspects, cinematic aspects, whatever. I try to throw a little bit of whatever I can <laughs> to make my channel a little bit different. If there's anything that you feel that maybe any of these guys have uh, influenced you to purchase or if there's anything that I might have maybe give you a little nudge on, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on that. Until next time, I'll see you on Carolina Fragrance Reviews.